Hi, my name is Dylan Yogindra. I'm the managing editor at Hymns and Mia. Today, I'm delighted to have with me Dr. Jeff Hoffman, Chief Medical Information Officer, Nationwide Children's Hospital in the US, ahead of his keynote at the Hymns Middle East event. Dr. Hoffman, can you give us a bit of an intro and background to your role in your organization, please? Absolutely, and it's a pleasure to be with you today. As you mentioned, I'm the Chief Medical Information Officer at Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus, Ohio in, in the U.S. My role is as the uh, head of our clinical informatics group, managing our information systems that clinicians, providers, patients, and families use to uh, provide care, uh, communicate, and to uh, advance the various programs and activities going on at our institution. So just to dive straight into it, if that's okay, um, uh, Jeff, could you tell us a little bit more about the initiatives that you're working on designed to promote connected care um, and really advance the continuity of care, please? Absolutely. Uh, lots of activity going on, especially these days with the need for a lot of virtual care and the need to provide services outside the traditional hospital walls. Certainly in the, in the space of acute care and need for chronic disease management, the explosion of the use of telehealth uh, and video has been essential in, in continuing to provide services. But beyond that, uh, we have been actively working for several years now in various programs to improve patient engagement through the use of digital tools to help uh, uh, remind them of, uh, of care needs, to close care gaps, uh, to engage them in their own self-education and awareness of, of the diseases that they have, and in our case, uh, being a children's hospital, the diseases their children have, uh, as well as uh, trying to leverage the immense amount of data we have on our patients and our families to help to better uh, deploy uh, the limited resources that we have to service a very large population of patients. So to drill down into a little bit more of that, Jeff, is this, is this kind of explosion of technology something that's been accelerated during the pandemic in your experience? I think the technologies themselves uh, have been accelerating in terms of their sophistication over the past several years. What's changed in the past uh, nine months or so is the willingness to be creative and to use technology more aggressively. I think previously there was some hesitancy uh, to use the technology both on the provider side and on the patient side because of various barriers in terms of connectivity, uh, general adoption of tech by, uh, by senior, uh, more experienced uh, providers who, who uh, really question the um, appropriateness of, of that type of technology as opposed to a face-to-face -face visit. But I think a lot of those barriers have been broken down by the need to uh, provide services remotely and have patients and families stay in their homes. Really interesting. I think that resonates with a lot of the people I'm speaking to at the moment, actually. Um, from a cultural perspective, is that something that's had to be um, transformed? Does it have to be changed? Or do you think actually patients and providers actually have had the right kind of infrastructure in place and it's been quite a smooth transition. So I think the amount of infrastructure and the sophistication of that infrastructure has been quite variable as you go from place to place. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the capabilities and investments that organizations have made in these technologies. Some of it is the patient population, where they live, their accessibility to technology. Uh, but also, very importantly, I think there has been a, a change. There is a cultural change going on in terms of not just the acceptance of these technologies, but in many cases among younger patients and parents of young children, almost a demand for this technology. They, they interact with so much of their world uh, from uh, their business and, uh, and uh, economic relationships to their interpersonal relationships through digital tools, it's sort of an anathema for them why they can't interact with their healthcare providers in the same way. So I don't think that um, there's really as much of a need to push healthcare organizations along uh, from an IT perspective. It appears that the consumers and the patients are doing this very effectively on their own. Yes, absolutely. I think it's actually really interesting to get um, to, to get your perspective from, from the pediatrics aspect. It's something that I've not been 
uh, had sort of, you know, have, have spoken to many people about, but I think there's that cultural shift that probably isn't as large as it would be for the, for the sort of elderly generation, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So, so moving on to the, the aspect of um, well, the application of predictive analytics, Jeff, can you talk to us a little bit more about that and the drive uh, for patient engagement strategies to improve outcomes, please? You know, a lot of people have been talking about big data for many years. That's become almost a, a trite expression these days. But more and more organizations like ours are able to leverage the incredible amount of information that we have in our electronic health records and other systems um, and the sophisticated um, data analytics techniques we have these days to really start to impact areas that previously we thought were, were almost impossible to address. Uh, questions like, who is likely to show up in the emergency department with an asthma, asthma attack in the next several uh, months? Uh, who is likely to partner or participate in an attempt to engage them in care coordination activities? Um, and to that last point, that's an area we've been doing a lot of work in and have actually worked to develop uh, some interesting predictive uh, algorithms that help us determine which patients and families are more likely to, uh, to accept help with care coordination and navigation of their care for very complex uh, conditions. Uh, previously, less than half the patients that we contacted uh, attempted to contact either we were able to contact or engaged with us. What we found through our um, uh, data analytics and our modeling and simulations is that around 10% of those patients uh, would have more than a 50% chance of saying yes to accepting care coordination services. So by directing your care coordinators to that 10% uh, first, you can capture a larger share of patients who can really benefit from those services instead of um, diverting resources to uh, making contact and outreach with individuals who are much less likely to engage. I, I just want to kind of touch on a final couple of uh, pieces, if, if that's okay with you. Um, from your experience, are you looking to any um, regions in the US or beyond that you've looked to learn from? Is there, any, is there anyone in particular you'd like to reference at, at this point at all? Yes, I think there are some very interesting um, applications of technology, uh, wide scale across populations. I'm specifically thinking of the work that's done uh, uh, in, um, in a, a couple of different Asian countries, um, specifically work done in South Korea uh, and Japan. Um, I'm also impressed with a lot of the work that's going on in Scandinavia, in the countries that are really leveraging their health system and their integrated delivery networks to provide much more social care and outreach into the communities. Um, those are two areas I've been keeping a close watch on uh, because of uh, both their acceptance and application of technology on a, on, a, on a large scale, and also some early suggestions of some really positive impacts of those efforts. Absolutely, and that's something actually we, we've learned just recently in our Hymns Europe digital event, uh, especially from the Scandinavian, from the Nordic, uh, Nordic regions, definitely are doing some exciting things. And then we're obviously hearing from the, from the, from the East as well, uh, as you mentioned. Um, finally, Jeff, can, is there anything that our audience should um, look forward to learning more from you about at the event um, that's, taking, that's coming up very soon next month? Um, or is there anyone in particular you're looking forward to hearing from as well? So uh, my, my keynote is going to really take a uh, sort of a long view, uh, looking historically at where we've come from, how we got to this point of healthcare being not just technological, but really uh, focused within hospitals and healthcare systems, and what opportunities there are today to really start to expand and think about the role of hospitals outside of their traditional walls to expand that care outward uh, and to really impact um, their, their populations, but also the communities that they exist in. I think that's an area where my institution in particular has, has done a lot of work and invested a lot of energy in really improving the life and health and well-being uh, of, our, of our community and our neighbors. Because I think at the end, uh, a hospital is more than just a place to seek care if you're ill or injured. It should be a beacon of, of wellness and, and, uh, and caring that, that extends far beyond the physical uh, facilities. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Um, we're, we're super excited to um, to have you keynoting at our event. 
um, and, and want to take this opportunity to thank you so much for your time as I completely appreciate you must be extremely busy. So thanks again, Jeff. It's been great being with you today. Thank you for the opportunity.